Hi, everybody. It's Mark Russian of markrushin.com. It is Wednesday, December 9th, 2020. And uh, yeah, last night I, I made a short, haltingly erratic video about uh, talking about the uh, hearing about the news of the death of uh, Harold Budd. And uh, I said, uh, uh, didn't even know I was kind of rambling there. Of course, I always tend to ramble. I should call this the ramble. I'm sure there's other things there called the ramble. But uh, yeah, very sad news to, to hear of his death. And uh, one album that I forgot to mention was Through the Hill that uh, uh, Harold Budd and Andy Partridge made in the early 90s. I remember it was it was... It was like the best of both. It was the the whimsy of of Andy Partridge, combined with um, uh, the 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 graciousness of of Harold Budd, and uh, you know just reading the other uh, Harold Budd interviews uh, over the years, he just seems like a just a a, a, a very humorous guy, He's real good and 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 humble and um. So anyway, a big loss. But one thing that's lost is, is their album. It's not on the streaming services, and that's a disgrace. I, I remember buying it, and it was, and then after that, I think it went out of print. And who knows? And Andy Partridge, it's, what is it with these guys? Just put your stuff out on the streaming services. What? what right? It's. I mean, look at this. Andy Partridge's picture has Harold Budd in it. And where's the album? Right? No, it's got the uh, his his contribution to No Talking Just Head, and uh, the hist whatever this history of rock and roll is, Cherry Cherry Red Records. So that's it's a bummer. And you know they do that for whatever. I don't know whether there's a contracts involved or the 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 record company or. No, everyone was just like, yeah, we'll just, I, I never understood that about musicians was, um, oh, it's out of print and we don't care. And yeah, copies are selling for whatever. <laughs> it's, I remember one time, like in the early days of the internet, you know, there'd be an album that was long out of print on there or, or there was a limited edition on the CDs. And it's like, uh, oh, it's selling for 75 bucks on eBay or $100 or $200 on eBay. It's like, why? Why? Just, just print up 500 of them, for God's sakes. And now in the streaming era, it's just a crime not to have something out there. I mean, I, listen, I know they're like the artists and everything, and um, they're going to do what they want to do. And that's fine. But... Uh, You know, I don't want to buy your box set of vinyl, right? I haven't owned a turntable in God, nearly 30 years. Well, maybe 25. No, it's more like 30. <clears throat> Closer to 30. Anyway, anyway. So, yeah, that just like what? Because I was like, I was like, I, I, I knew he did an album with Andy Partridge. Is it out there? Oh, no, it's not. It's not. I should <laughs> you can imagine what it's selling for on eBay. I can just imagine. Anyway, we'll get rid of that there. It'll bring me back, actually. Um, so anyway, this afternoon, it was nice and clear today. The sun was out. It's bright. Actually, uh, I think it was in the low 50s, and it'll be that way tomorrow, too. And then after a little bit of rain and snow, and I think the low is supposed to be 15 by 15 Fahrenheit by in a few days. So welcome, welcome back, winter. We saw you for about one day in, in October. So I did get out to the hillside again. I just raked, and then I cut up one giant log out there and kind of did the old pick it up, end over end. That's a good workout. And just moved it, moved it over the hillside, not over the hillside, but across the hillside to an area where I have all the logs, and I will be processing them eventually. Uh, just get them cut and out of the hillside because you leave a log on the hillside and just stuff starts growing around it. And it's all the wrong stuff. The thorny rose, the, uh, what is it? Wild honeysuckle or something like that. <clears throat> and just then burdock and, and all that crap. So best to kind of move it out of the way and get it processed. 
So that's what I was doing today. And then and I was uh, raking around where I'm eventually going to have my fires. I've got brush piles up on the hillside. And then uh, I made the mistake on the way, on the way in of uh, trimming up a, a lilac that had gotten, uh, I guess I didn't trim it this spring. And uh, uh, the vine, some, some sort of vine. I don't know how something grows out of the ground and attaches to a lilac that's, that's three and a half feet off. I don't know. How, how does that happen? And all of a sudden, and then it just, you don't, if you don't mind that every year, it becomes a problem or every two years. Anyway, as you can see, I've got a painting back here and it's not one that's on eBay. I just put it back there because it's like, you know what? I've kind of gotten off the rails as far as uh, the painting and the art and everything like that. Maybe I need to bring that back into it. I did get the, uh, I did get the stand. I should have paintings up there. So be it. I've been a little immersed in the music thing here for the last week and a half, two weeks. And uh, I still have not edited any of uh, the music that John and I, John Harnish and I made on Sunday, but I will get around to that eventually. There's time. There's I got two and a half weeks off around Christmas. So there is enough time to handle that. Uh, today's topic, Musician Estate Planning 101. Of course, whenever any musician passes away you just kind of you kind of wonder what a mess what a total mess their estate is i would i would i would venture to guess that even the most professional musicians out there uh they're a lot of them have just <laughs> messy messy estates i would I, like i don't mean like superstars or anything like that who can pay somebody to handle all that sort of but, but somebody like harold budd and thinking about like how many all the different record companies he released music through, and he, every single one's got an agreement, and uh, where are the masters, and where's the artwork, and who's going to put it out in the future, and how's that work, right? Well, and what about the Andy Partridge album, huh? <laughs> right? Uh So there's that. What do I do? What do I do? Well, I'm an independent musician. I don't sign any contract with record labels. The only thing I do is I've got terms and conditions with digital distributors and companies that manage my um, our company. One company that manages, well, there's multiple companies that manage the uh, uh, mechanical and publishing royalties. At least I have done that so far. But just as far as the the source files for all the the music that I've created and uh, the the um, uh, field recordings, the field recordings that I have edited, processed, the artwork, all of that stuff. I have all that in a uh, on on my hard drive. I have a file, a, a section in there, and it doesn't necessarily have everything because everything is on the backup drive. I used to use a cloud-based service, and then I hated it just because I, it just it was ugly. And uh, I'll, it was the Amazon one, right? The Amazon backup. But I, I also used OneDrive at one time, Microsoft OneDrive, and it's just it just it's it's ugly, <laughs> right? Like oh, maybe I want to file from that. Oh well, my gosh. No, it's, you know, it's like getting money out of an insurance company after somebody dies. Oh, we don't want to. You must have this extra form. And oh, no. Oh, this other person needs to sign. Well, we sent that form to him three times. We never got it. And the person says, I, I filled that form out three times. For God's sakes. What do you, I mailed it in. It's like that. It really is. So, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> I... Yeah, I've used cloud-based services. Yeah, I think I even pay for some extra space on Google Drive. Yeah, I do. I do. And uh, but I just I don't put my music out there because it's every single interface is is a disaster. As far as I'm concerned, it should look like a uh, Windows Explorer or whatever. That's what it should look like, but it it, ne it never does. It always ends up being some sort of clunky, cloudy nightmare so i took the reins back from that and also i was just kind of like why am i paying 50 or 75 dollars a year 
to house all this stuff. Or I could just buy a backup drive that's perfectly good for that that will last me probably near forever. As you know, my lifetime anyway, for the amount of stuff that I put in. And whatever, if I need to buy another one, I do. That costs me like 89 bucks, right? And it automatically backs up every single night, overnight. And and then every so often. Okay, so there's the hard drive, there's the backup drive, which is automated. And then I do this. That's right. I burn my files every year to DVD R. You can get 4.7 gigs on there. You know, I might use a few every year for because I, you know, I typically Save my files as either waves or flax, uh, sometimes MP3s, the artwork, and um, I have it all in folders. And uh, you know, there's a uh, for each artist that I publish under, and there's the it, it, It's a very simple system. It's very simple, and I've got all my DVDs burned, I think, and uh, put them in, uh, you know, one of these like one of these this isn't one of them but these are like where uh all my recovery discs are and everything like that oh look at this what i get here <laughs> laser jet that i i don't even know how many years ago i don't have why, why do i have that in here? oh here it is here's the mastering reference disc for my first album the driver's companion which i released i think a year later i think it was 04 i released it and uh the only album I ever had mastered. It does sound very good. <laughs> it was worth the money, um, but I don't. I don't do that anymore. But uh, yeah, so that's what I do. I do. I you know save it to a hard drive in a file format based on the artist and based on the year and and based on the release and then just everything's in there. And then uh, yeah, then the automate the backup drive is automated. And then DVDs are super cheap, super cheap. And then you just drag and it doesn't take long to burn it. Get out the old chart. It's super easy, right? These will last a while, won't they? Last longer than cassette tapes anyway. So uh, that's my musician estate planning one-on-one. The other thing that I do, and I've told my, I've told my wife about this. I've got, I've got a printout. Of like you know all the distributors that I use, uh, you know, logins and uh, passwords and stuff like that. It's, I don't write out the password, but she knows what they they are. That we have a, you know, we have a uh, shorthand, and uh, see so, you know if like I always like to say if I ever get hit by a bus. You know, she'll be able to um, keep that going because the thing about uh, distributors anymore, some of them you have to pay on a yearly basis to have that stuff into the systems and others, you know, they just take a cut and that's actually kind of like that. And, uh, but for those, but for those systems where you have to pay every year, you got to make sure that, 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 you know, you have a, you have a credit card in there and it's, it's, it's valid and it's just, it's one extra thing. That, um, excuse me here, it's just one extra thing that you have to worry about. And uh, so I, I can't even imagine, I can't even imagine somebody who's released music on, you know, like maybe 10 different labels over their lifetime. What the, the hassle and, you know, everybody, I'm sure every, you know, like, like somebody like Harold Budd, he released, uh, uh, what was it? The, the Room in 2000 or 2001 it was released on uh it was released on a major label and uh well you just gotta think 20 years you think anybody is still working there that you know maybe one or two people maybe like the people you you work i mean the industry has changed so drastically in 20 years would they even be there would they even remember oh you're in our catalog oh you know much less labels back in the 1970s right how does that how, do, how does that coordinate that is 
fascinating stuff. I'm sure they've all got like lawyers and, and things to handle that. But, but I mean, if you, if you've got holes in your discography, you've got collaborations and things that aren't out there, uh, you know, then the, you know, then the, uh, heirs, the, uh, the executors or executrixes, executrice, how's that work? Executrix. What if you have more than one female executrix, then is it an executrice? I'll have to look that up later. That'll, that'll bother me forever. But, uh, <laughs> oh my gosh, we got two people watching. We got one at, uh, YouTube and one at Twitch. Hello, everybody. But uh, anyway, uh, so there you go. There you go. That's, that is, that is, that's like the beginning, right? If you can just get all your ducks in a row and have all your files backed up and somebody knows where all your stuff is and, you know, how do your logins, which credit card you use. You know, I mean, you would typically um, expect a, uh, you know, a spouse or perhaps a family member. Or perhaps if you have a, you know, a lawyer, if you're of a, you know, certain stature or whatever like that to, to, to handle that sort of stuff and put it in a safe deposit box or anything like that. That's, that's what I would do. That's what I would do. Um, but anyway, 16 and a half minutes here. Time to stop rambling. Wife's going to be home soon. I'm getting hungry because I worked out in the fields all dang day long. I didn't do it just, just for an hour after, after the day job. Talk to you later. See you tomorrow. Unless something weird happens, you know. <laughs> you never know with the new abnormal. It's Anything could happen. All right. Stay safe. See you later.